James O'Keefe back here on the ground in Minneapolis. Our undercover journalist at Project Veritas have just exposed a voter fraud ring so widespread that many members of the Somali community here consider it an open secret. Many believe if this corruption continues, there'll be no more free elections. And our sources inside the Somali community here allege that the architect of this pay-for-vote scheme is none other than U.S. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Your focus is winning, no matter what you do. You ignore the rules and regulations. There's no moral and ethics here. It's just the end will justify the means. Project Veritas has received an explosive piece of tape. The tape you're about to see shows a man buying a registration form for an absentee ballot from a voter, giving him, quote, pocket money, unquote, of $200 and expecting to collect his ballot when the voter receives it. In this next tape, we hear from another ballot harvester who tells us how much money he receives for his illegal activities, activities he says he doesn't care are illegal. Omar Jamal is the latest Project Veritas insider. He secretly recorded dozens of conversations in and around the Somali community in Minneapolis to expose a rampant voter fraud scheme. I think Elhan Omar is one of the people who are behind all this mess. And, and they have a lot of people that work for them that make sure that you know, tasks get carried out, ballots collected, uh, there's a cash money exchanging hands. It's an open secret that everybody knows it, but they don't talk about it. Will they do it again for the next election, general election? Yeah, yeah. November, Mr. Man, I know. Oh, Mr. Yeah. yeah. Uh, November is, is uh, actually the gearing up for November, yes. 80,000 of immigrants votes will swing this election to one side. And then they became very important. They became the focus of this, and millions of dollars are spent to make sure that these 80 or 100,000 of immigrant votes go one way. So it will make a difference. What can I What can I It's expensive, why? And you have it's best for What over here? How many? 40 people. 40 people. Ah. This election now, they'll spend millions of dollars. It costs a lot. It's huge money. We'll see, yeah. ah. How much? $200 to $300. $200 to $300 is yeah. the compensation? Yeah. Some of the techniques that he uses is to exchange money for vote, and uh, that's not a secret. It's, it's open and everybody knows about it. She is the one who came up with all this. The community, she's the one. Somehow. Nobody knew about Yeah, this is something like new. So she did it. She yeah. started this whole thing with yeah. the, the pay to vote. Yeah. Through our undercover reporting, we have discovered yet another person who claims he was paid hundreds of dollars in a pay-to-vote election fraud ring. His name is Osman Ali Dakwan, and he alleges both Ilhan Omar and possibly even her opponent in the last primary each tried to game the system in a pay-to-win scenario. Where is the money coming from? I can't. I think I like it. I can't. 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 I can
الان العقم بحين السيد الان العقم بحين السيد ها لكن ما قلت ما قلت انا بحين السيد جمال عثمان اوسيت كانسل يس the more election you win uh, the more powerful you will become uh, the more fundraising the money you will get the more money you get the more you can buy people it's all tied together <laughs> That's illegal, why? We don't care illegal. I know a man, of course, illegal is a man. And I'll eat it, or they'll eat it. And they'll eat it. Your focus is winning, no matter what you do. You ignore the rules and regulations. There's no moral and ethics here. It's just the end will justify the means. Osman clearly has a blatant disregard for the American political process, doesn't fear the illegalities of his actions, so much so that he casually mentions having to pay off al-Shabaab, a.k.a. al-Qaeda, to open a business back home in Mogadishu. That's a lot of money. 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 Osman Ali says even the election judges are in on it. Bill Hans, people count the ballots? Everything. So the people who are actually sitting, working, are the same people. They shouldn't have those same people doing all the job. So the people that work for Ilhan are actually counting the ballots, counting the vote. And they become a manager in the precinct too. And manage the precinct. Yes. Progressives, yes. So they do all of it. They do all of it. They do it all, they do all of it. Well, not only Somali community, American people, it looks like uh, if they're interested in continuation of the institution of this country, if they're interested in keeping this country intact, I think one of the things to do is to make sure that people at least live up to the basic tenets of the constitution of this country. You know, basic rules of morals and ethics. If you ignore that, then, then soon the house is going to collapse. You know, if you don't do that, then there's nothing else left. Even Osman, who is profiting from the pay-to-vote scheme, is able to reconcile with the simple fact that if criminals aren't arrested and held accountable for the wrongdoings, they'll never stop because they have no reason to fear. Why? Osman isn't the only person we found during our investigation who admits to being paid, but not all were as enthusiastic about their involvement in the pay for vote scheme. Ilhan has a handful of people that work for her. They came to us to our apartments. And they tell us that this year they're going to vote for Ilhan. Do you know if they come directly from Ilhan Omar's campaign? Uh, yes, because they, their t shirts. They're not hiding. Do they like let people know that they're with Ilhan's campaign when they're. People obviously know. They all know. Everybody knows. Everybody knows in the community. As you've heard from our sources, some in the Somali community feel strong-armed and imposed upon Ilhan's crew. Beyond the alleged confiscation of absentee ballots, we've also heard 
they may go as far as voting for them at the polling station. They will make sure that you vote, and then once you did that, on the way back right home, you can give you the money the phone. How, how do they make sure you voted for Ilhan Omar? Say over in the United States. They help us because uh, at the voting booth they allow interpreter. At the voting booth they allow them to help you vote? Yeah. So they walk up to the booth with you yeah. and they vote with you? Yeah. They go inside with us and they help us and they actually do that inside there. So inside the booth the person goes in and actually votes for you. Yeah. Yes. So you never even get a chance to vote. It's, does does he he never really votes? It's the other person. Yeah, they actually the ones who vote. The people don't usually. Yeah, <laughs> they do the voting. There's, they're standing outside Jamal Usman's team and other teams are standing there. They walk with you to the booth and then they vote, oh, vote this guy, vote this guy, vote this guy. Vote even if you speak English. Wow. So how, how do they get away with it at the voting center? Why, why does nobody complain at the voting center that you're letting these people do this? Everybody just lets it go. Federal law says anyone who votes for others is violating 52 U.S.C. 10307, punishable by up to five years in prison and a $10,000 fine. The law is clear. Buying votes is illegal. It's spent over $250,000. Wow. That kind of crazy. Just handing it out. They got that much cash. Jumping yeah. it out. This is a big business because look, this girl's gonna propose how to end the money to Israel. Ali Ghani and the, the owner of the mall and Ilhan's campaign, the cash was coming from this guy because the money was being paid in home. He's Palestinian. Yeah, he's financing this whole thing. The reason she's fighting for Palestine is because of this guy. Mm. That's it. Yeah. yeah. He's pulling the strings. Yeah. yeah. So it's all about money and power. And, and, and they want to to oh, sure, yeah, no. find the Israel money. Yeah, no, no, no. That's all this is about. That's what that's about. I hope the state, the governor and the uh, attorney general will will take this issue very serious. Now we know it's out there. Now we know it's public. Uh, and I hope they will investigate and look into this in a, in a very serious way. And I, I also hope that the U.S. attorney, uh, the federal level, and even the FBI might come and look into this because this, you know, cannot continue the way it is. It's, it's simply wrong and illegal. If the strong-arming tactics of Ilhan's crew prove to be true, it is a complete violation of basic human rights. From our reporting in the field, the community seems to be fully aware that Ilhan Omar's campaign is connected to a voter fraud ring that operates with impunity. So this raises questions. Why hasn't the Attorney General Keith Ellison looked into this? Is the head of the DFL Ken Martin turning a blind eye to this blatant corruption? Does Ilhan Omar yield this much power? If so, why? Should we be worried that unknown powerful people hold leverage over her?